you were going to fall. I knew you were going to get discouraged. I knew some of you was going to say, well, I'm not worthy to be a child of God. I'm not worthy to be in that church. I'm not worthy to go there. I'm not worthy to participate. I feel ashamed of what I went out and done. Can I tell you that God wasn't surprised? And I wasn't surprised. Because that's exactly what children will do at times. But the thing about it is, is the Lord Jesus Christ, the work He did on that cross, it doesn't falter. It doesn't fail. It doesn't tremble. It doesn't crack. It doesn't fall apart. When He did that work in your life, He did it for good. And it's a rock. You can stand on Katie sings that old song, Jesus is the rock. She doesn't see Jesus is the sand pile. She doesn't say Jesus is the crumbling brick. She doesn't say Jesus is a dusty old thing that'll fall all to pieces the second you try to stand on. Ah, uh -uh. no, he pulled your feet up out of the miry clay and placed you on a rock to stand. Amen. And it's a firm foundation. Charles Spurgeon, that old Baptist preacher over in England in 1800, says. The bridge of grace many of an army has trumped across the top of and not one timber, not one nail, not one spike has ever loosened or fell out. Can I tell you when Jesus Christ done a work in you, He done it right. He done it right. It wasn't until I began to understand that what He done for me on that cross was a permanent solution. Yeah. And it was the only solution that I ever had. It's the only one I can go to. I, the seminars ain't going to get it. The conferences ain't going to get it. Yeah. The fancy preaching ain't going to get it. Those big high flute and things that I went two years ago and we all wore suits and dressed up, it ain't going to get it. It's only the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's only what Jesus done on Calvary. That's the only thing. That I can stand on tonight is what Jesus done for me. I got to believe that if He's given me life and give it to me more abundantly, Jesus said the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I hear people all the time worried about the devil. I always want to fight the devil. Our word of faith, friends, whoever they may be. The ones that like to get out. And they're always quoting the Word. They're always, they're always fighting the devil. They're always wanting to pull out a spiritual sword and, and swat at the devil. Can I tell you something? I quit worrying about the devil years ago. Because I found out something. I found out that what Christ done for me, that if I put my faith in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross, devil, you don't have anything in me just like Christ said. You ain't got nothing in me because my faith is in Christ. You can come, you can tempt, you can torment, you can try to discourage, but if I keep my eyes on Calvary, if I keep my eyes on the finished work of Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross of Calvary for me, I can stand on that. I don't have to worry about the devil. Because greater is He that is in me than He is in this world. And I can do this for all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do that. It's Jesus. Listen, if you've been saved, Jesus is in you. Yes. He didn't leave. Just because you decided to go mess up somewhere didn't mean Jesus left. It just means you weren't listening to Him. Guilty. Come on. Anybody here guilty of that? You want to go do something on your own. Jesus said, don't go there. The Holy Spirit said, don't do it. You felt that tug in your heart that says you're about to mess up. But pride, the root of all sin, pride, pride stepped up and said, no, I want this for myself. No, I want to do this because I like it. I want to do this because I want to. I want to do it. God, I put it on the back burner what you're wanting over here. God, I want to do this for myself. I like it. I like what I'm doing. And then you go out and you transgress against God. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, did I mess up. You see, sin is pleasurable for a season. 
But after a while, after a while, you feel death creep into it. You really do. <clears throat> you see, when a person is born again, they're to become dead unto sin and alive unto Christ. Every single one of us is born with a sin nature in us. We've all got a sin nature. That's that sin nature that you feel rise up when you're jealous, whenever you're envious, when you're covetous, <clears throat> when you mistreat somebody, when you back 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 bite them, whenever you stab at them, when you when you do all that, that is that sin nature creeping up inside of you. And some people might say, well, I got saved. I don't have a sin nature. Listen, that's not what Paul taught in the book of Romans. If you read Romans chapter 5, 6, 7, and 8, you'll find out that Paul very well says, yes, there is a sin nature in a believer. But he also says, and that, that word in there, sin is mentioned many times in chapter 6, chapter 7, and, and chapter 8. And it, 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 it means the sin nature. When Paul says the sin that sin shall not have dominion over you, what he's saying is that the sin nature that's in each and every person, if you're in Christ and trusting in what He did on the cross, that sin nature will not have dominion over you. You'll be dead unto it. Mike mentioned something here a while later back about the law. He mentioned it here tonight. Listen, when you and I decide to try to put the law in our lives, to try to straighten ourselves out, that sin nature will revive. Because God doesn't want you trusting in law. God sent the Ten Commandments and said, okay, obey these or else. And nobody could obey them. But there was no redeeming value in the law. There was no redeeming value in the Ten Commandments. God said, Thou shalt not, but there wasn't any of us that couldn't do it. We broke them. If you broke one, you broke them all. We broke them. We we're a broken people. And law was sent so that sin would be imputed unto us so that you and I would see how sin, sinful sin is. In other words, it wouldn't even have become sin to us if God hadn't have said you can't do it. Or you shouldn't do it. It wouldn't be sin. But when God sent His law, it was like holding a big mirror up in front of us and saying, look how dirty you are. Look how ugly you are. And I know we live in a day whenever uh, preachers and, and churches and stuff like that is trying to turn man into some kind of God. We're trying to deitize man and bring God down to human form. And we're on the flip side of streams of all of that. But the truth of the matter is, is my victory is found not in how good I can be or not in how many laws I can keep or not how holy I live on this side. But my victory is found in what Christ done for me. Yeah. He done something for me I couldn't do for myself. Yeah. He's done something for you that you can't do for yourself. Listen, if it took God to save you, don't you think it's going to take God for you to live right? Come on, Come on, brother. Come on brother. I, I, I mean, you may know somebody, but I cannot name in my 20... In my 27 years of being in the ministry, <clears throat> and I've been everywhere with this family, preaching and singing, and met all kinds of people, and I cannot name you one person that i ever seen go through a 12-step program and be successful. I can't find one. They all went back. They all went back. But I can name you some people Come on, man. that came down to the altar. Come on, brother. That got down on their knees, brother. Come on, man. And they got down to business with a holy God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. And they said, Lord, I can't do this. I've tried the 12 step programs. I tried the, the coloring books and the notebooks and the little beads and the, the rings and I've seen the people that I've, I've, I've called them and, and talked to them and said I want to be accountable unto you and yet they still failed. 
You see, we got into that for a while. Accountability. Need to be accountable to somebody. Listen, if you can't be accountable to God, you forget about being accountable to man. Amen. Right.